In this video, we'll be discussing how to manage your diabetes during sick days. When you're sick, your body releases stress hormones which are designed to fight illness, but they also raise blood sugar levels. Having a sick day plan will help you keep your blood sugar levels in a safe range and can reduce the chances of developing a more serious complication. Here are some basic recommendations for how to safely manage blood sugar levels when you're sick. Number one, stay hydrated. High blood sugars will cause the body to urinate more, which can lead to dehydration. Drinking plenty of fluids when you're sick can help prevent that. To maintain hydration, choose sugar-free fluids like water, tea, or a zero sports drink unless otherwise directed by your healthcare provider. Aim for about six to eight ounces of sugar-free fluids every hour, and every three hours you can also drink something salty like a broth. Number two, monitor blood sugar levels often, at least every two to four hours. It's important to know what your blood sugar levels are doing when you're sick so you can take appropriate action. Monitoring also lets you know if what you're doing is working. People with type 1 diabetes and some people with type 2 diabetes are at risk for developing diabetic ketoacidosis, or DKA, during illness. DKA occurs when there is little to no insulin available to help transport sugar into the cells of the body. When this happens, blood sugar levels will start to rise and blood acids, which are called ketones, will start to increase. If unrecognized, DKA can lead to severe dehydration, changes in electrolytes, nausea and vomiting, abdominal pain, trouble thinking clearly, and difficulty breathing. If you're at risk for developing DKA, you should also check for ketones every four hours in addition to frequent blood sugar monitoring. This can be done at home with either a blood ketone meter or urine ketone strips. DKA is a serious complication and requires immediate medical attention. So how can we prevent it from developing? Well, number three, keep taking your prescribed medications. Remember that DKA occurs from a lack of insulin, so people who are insulin dependent should never stop insulin during illness. If you're an insulin user, keep taking your long-acting insulin as prescribed, even if you're vomiting or can't eat. If you take both long and fast-acting insulin, you should continue to take fast-acting insulin as well to cover food and drinks that contain carbohydrates. You may also use it to correct a high blood sugar. If you're not sure how much fast-acting insulin to take to correct high blood sugar, call your doctor to discuss what to do. If you are only prescribed long-acting insulin and are concerned about low blood sugars, talk to your doctor to see if a reduced dose is recommended for you during illness. If you take any pill medications to manage your diabetes, talk to your doctor about what adjustments to make during illness. Number four, try to eat as best you can. When you're sick, your body still needs fuel in order to function. If you can't eat solid foods, try soft or liquid foods that contain carbohydrates. Aim for about 150 to 200 grams of carbohydrates per day, divided out in small frequent meals. When you're substituting normal meals for sick day foods, you do want to choose foods that contain carbohydrates. These foods should be easy to digest and keep down so you can safely take your fast acting insulin. Examples of ideal sick day foods include dry toast, regular jello, regular sports drinks, regular popsicles, saltine crackers, ice cream, regular soft drinks, and fruit juice. Try to consume these sick day foods in portion sizes that contain around 15 grams of carbohydrates. By consuming carbs in 15 gram portion sizes, this will allow you to estimate how much to eat and drink so you can still take your fast acting insulin. For example, if a regular meal for you contains around 60 grams of carbohydrates, you can replace that with approximately 60 grams of these sick day foods. Number five, when you're sick, it's important to know when to call the doctor or seek additional care. Call or get help if you have blood sugar levels less than 70 twice in one day, have blood sugar levels over 250 for two checks in a row that are not responding to increased insulin or fluids. If you're vomiting or have severe diarrhea for more than six hours, if you have a fever of 101 degrees or higher for more than 24 hours, and if you are checking for ketones, seek additional care if you have moderate to large ketones in your urine or blood. If checking with urine strips, the darker colors on the color change bar indicate that you have moderate to large ketones. If checking blood ketones with a machine, anything over 1.5 also indicates moderate to large ketones. You can also call Denver Health's nurse line if it's after hours and you are just not sure what to do or have questions about sick day management. If you experience more severe symptoms like chest pain, difficulty breathing, severe pain in your stomach, 
uncontrolled nausea and vomiting, or are having trouble thinking clearly, seek medical attention immediately. The best way to stay safe during illness is to make a plan ahead of time. Have sick day supplies available at home so you don't need to go out when you're not feeling well. And talk with your doctor or diabetes specialist about your medications and what adjustments you should make during illness to compensate for higher blood sugar levels and avoid lows. Thanks for watching.